Hey, good morning once again to all our viewers. It is 11.02 and as we continue with our non-stop rolling coverage, uh, I am right here in Pinya in Bengaluru outside the ISRO control room. And joining me on the broadcast, of course, is Niranjan. Niranjan, you are at IISC and uh, at this very moment, uh, you're also going to be showing our viewers a lot of space experiments. Uh, over to you, Niranjan. We are waiting to watch you. Well, Swisha, I'm, I'm inside the ISC uh, campus and, uh, you know, the beauty of India's space industry today is, is while you talk about the success of ISRO, uh, the smaller role that the private sector is playing today and has been playing for the last few years. And I have with me uh, Rohan. Rohan is from uh, Bellatrix Aerospace and I'm inside the propulsion Space Propulsion Laboratory of Bellatrix inside ISC. First of all, Rohan, before we get to the experiments, and a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm at an area, and, and if my VJ Bhagat can give you uh, a view, a 360-degree view of uh, this uh, space laboratory, space experiments are conducted, and what you are looking at are, uh, are you know, are, are experiments and uh, exercises that are conducted here for the future of India's space program in, uh, you know, equipment that could play a key part and uh, technology that could be used in future space projects, perhaps. Rohan, talking about the landing and the entire country's focus is on the landing on the moon this evening. How significant is this moment for India's space program? Um, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, yes, it's a very special day, and uh, if you look uh, if you look globally, there's only three countries which have achieved this feat. So, uh, and it's very very difficult to achieve this mission. So, uh, it's very significant for our country because you know um, we have always been a spacefaring nation, uh, and us going to the moon and uh, landing on the moon is very significant um, uh, milestone to be achieved. Now, a lot of people ask, what next? What after you land on the moon? Uh, well, uh, if, you, uh, if you talk about Chandrayaan-3, uh, science is one of the key, I mean, the science is one of the key criteria which we need to, uh, you know, demonstrate. But landing itself is one of the biggest technology demonstrators. Uh, first, you need to land on a foreign celestial body. So uh, that demonstration itself is not a simple technology. So that is, that's what is needed first. But post-successful landing, there's a lot of science which we'll be conducting. And, uh, you know, that is critical going forward. You know, Suresh, I was speaking to Rohan just before coming into the space laboratory and Rohan was telling me about uh, the possibilities. For example, uh, you have the lockets, the carriers that use fuel, the traditional fuel. Now think of the future prospects when, for example, uh, what Rohan and Bellatrix do is they're working on an electric module. So you have the traditional fueled cars and then you have electric cars. Similarly, they're work working on the possibility of electric propulsion, which would mean more effective space exploration. Is that correct? That's right. So what we are working on is, you know, just like there's a movement going on on Earth, like to go to greener alternatives where electric mobility is picking up. In space, as I said, uh, the distance from A to B is thousands of kilometers. So uh, satellites are getting smaller day by day, but that your propulsion, your systems are not getting small. On the other hand, you don't have petrol stations in space to fill your satellites. So you need very efficient engine which give you higher mileage. So electric propulsion is the key. And that's what we are working on for all classes of satellites. From a 10 kg satellite all the way up to 5 ton class satellites, we develop engines. And uh, what's interesting today and what we are excited is, Chandrayaan is going to the South Pole, landing on the South Pole. And studies suggest there are a lot of ice deposits there. And we have developed an engine which runs on water as a fuel, an electric propulsion system. Water as in we don't split the hydrogen, oxygen and then combust it. Rather we convert uh, water vapor into plasma and the plasma is accelerated at higher velocities. So water is available on the moon that opens up a whole new chapter of space exploration. Say in future, today we succeed and then you open up an industrial economy on the moon. So going forward, but you know, uh, you know gold is available underneath the ocean. But why don't you mine it? The cost of mining is more than the value of gold, right? So there are a lot of natural resources on the moon. So it just doesn't make sense to bring them back because the cost is exorbitant. But with such technologies, when you have a fuel on, on, available on the surface of the moon, you will enable in-situ resource utilization and you can actually enable to bring back resources back to Earth. 
So uh, I mean, we're talking about you know um, climate change and all. So let's stop mining here. Let's look. It's no longer science fiction. It's happening. Yeah. So that's why I'm excited about today's mission. And and he was telling me, Rohan was telling me, Suesha, a little bit about uh, about one of the first projects that uh, they got was uh, from ISRO, where ISRO wanted to check the possibility of uh, using water on the moon if available as a propellant and i think that's the exciting possibility right now once we land uh, for india's space programs what are the possibilities next rohan first as i said we have to uh, demonstrate to the global uh, i mean um, uh, community that we can uh, do soft landing on the moon Going forward, uh, I think ISRO should uh, pave the way as it has done. It has handheld a lot of industries and now it is also handholding startups like us. So going forward, once the technology is matured enough, so uh, just like what US is happening with the Artemis Accords where you see a lot of private participation. Maybe ISRO succeeding in this, uh, we feel uh, opening up India's private access to moon. So and you, you, they, they're conducting a lot of uh, space experiments here. Essentially, what they're doing is, if, if Bhagat can just show you inside this canister. Now, uh, they're creating a space-like atmosphere there, and you're looking at uh, small, very tiny satellites, uh, you know, sa tiny satellites being propelled. Why don't you tell our viewers about the kind of experiments that you conduct here? So, uh, we develop green propellants as well. So, for satellites to move in space, you need to expel uh, some mass, right? So, we are. So what you see now on your screens is a small 1 Newton class thruster uh, being set up inside a vacuum chamber. So, this is used to propel uh, satellites or maintain its attitude in space. So, that's what is happening. All right. Very exciting times. And, uh, and, and you know, Rohan was also telling me that uh, perhaps uh, this year and, and uh, the possibilities are many because uh, you have ISRO, of course, and you have uh, ISRO's launch vehicles, but then you also have the private sector, which is a huge sector, huge sector, especially see what's happening in, in America where you have uh, the likes of SpaceX carrying satellites. And uh, very soon, very soon, how soon and, and how long do you think it will take and uh, what will that industry look like? the private industry once it opens up in India? So uh, the good news is uh, I think the present government has, um, uh, I mean, it's yet to be passed in the parliament now, but we do have a space policy. So once it's passed in the parliament, it becomes a bill. So it actually enables a lot of, because your uh, what investors are basically concerned is as the regulations. Because, you know, space is a global $450 billion industry. But India being a major space-faring nation, we only command 1% to 2% of the global market. If you want to command at least, say, 7 to 10%, right, the re regulations need to be eased out. So the government has actually looked uh, at this problem statement and now they've brought in a space policy in consultation with ISRO. So now it's very exciting because we see a lot of interest from foreign investors as well looking at how India can do things differently. We still have a knack of doing complicated things at, uh, at less lower cost, I would say. So in fact, what we have done, what you see, we are vertically integrated to reduce the cost. So uh, that's actually interesting for customers as well as in investors globally. So I, I think that would be India's, uh, you know, time. Uh, this is India's decade to actually uh, create a private ecosystem in space. Yeah. And, and you know, a lot of people talking about, uh, especially the growth in the last uh, nine years. Let me also tell you, as I go across to Zenath, uh, Zenath is also joining us live. She's in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, but, but you know, the, the possibilities are, are, are just too many, Suesha. Uh, going forward, India's space program, these are exciting times. And uh, the entire country praying for that uh, successful uh, soft landing on the moon. We've been talking about how complicated that is. We've been listening to ISRO scientists, former ISRO chiefs, on how hard all of them have worked uh, for this moment. So a big salute to our scientists. And uh, handing it back to you for now, Rohan, thank you very much for joining us. Handing it back to you for now.